And now joining me, the man that's putting all this together, Executive Vice President and GM of the Orioles, Mike Elias. Mike, great to see you, man. You too, Harold. Good to be with you. I thought I might catch you in Philly tonight, but it looks like you're still in the offices in, in Baltimore. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, close shot up there to Philadelphia, so maybe I got some time to get there later in the series. That's but we're true. a little busy here. There's, a, there's some stuff going on this week, as you've probably heard. Is there a trade deadline coming up? Is there, is there some busy things happening? Trade deadline this week, and there was a draft <laughs> about a week ago, in case you missed that. So well, we're, they're keeping us busy here in July. So here we are, five seasons in. Uh, wow. And you got, you're in first place in the American League East. How did it start? What was the plan? And are you on pace for where you thought you might be? Yeah, I think we're very proud of, uh, you know, what the team has accomplished the last couple of weeks. Um, it's a big moment for us. You know, we'll see. We were hoping to stay in first, but just to, um, you know, pass the raise over the weekend is a big moment for the organization, um, you know, because we've got a really healthy minor leagues. We're rated number one in the minors most places that you look. Uh, but now to be sitting there in first place in the entire American League, um, it's just the kind of thing you dream about when you start a rebuild. So um, we came in um, at the end of 2018, the Orioles' prior competitive window, a really successful one at that, you know, had kind of come to a pretty severe halt, and it was time to reset the baseball operations totally. Um, but I knew at the time that there was some talent already in the system, and we worked to develop those guys, and at the same time, kind of just continued pulling talent in, young talent from every direction possible, the draft, trades, waiver wire, uh, whatever we could do, and just kept amassing that talent. And it really felt like it um, It kind of spilled out onto the major league field in a very organic way last year, and the team just started winning games. Yeah, look, we just had a little shot of the board of your organization in the minor leagues. But the biggest thing, Mike, for me, you haven't missed on your number ones. When you have a first pick and a second pick, you can't miss on those first round draft pick guys or second rounders. You've done a great job with that. Why have you been successful there? Well, look, I think anytime you're looking at the draft, it's luck. Um, so we understand there's some good luck involved, but um, I had a lot of experience with it in Houston with those high picks and some of it wasn't good experience. We, we missed on a couple of them. Uh, we learned some lessons from it, and it was real experience with kind of the battle scars that you carry with you after you mess something up. Uh, but we also hit on some great picks there, and I remember what we did right. Um, and we just tried to apply our best practices going forward with each pick with the Orioles. We've got a very smart group in our scouting and analytics departments, and um, you know we just took as much time as we could studying each of these guys and you know, their careers are just getting started. But so far, I'll, I'll take it based on what I've seen. We're very happy uh, with the results of, of our high picks so far. Yeah, I, I got a chance to be with a couple of your top picks at the Futures game in Jackson and with, with Heston. And I got a chance to really talk to Heston about kind of the hitting philosophy in the organization. He's been there now three years. And he said it's continued to evolve. And, you know, when we hear analytics, everybody thinks everybody's in the same bucket. But there's growth and there's learning to that as well. What have you learned and the adjustments you've made along the way applying analytics and also a little bit of the old school, so to speak? Yeah, I've, I, I've learned that, uh, the you know, you have to kind of, if you want to be at the forefront with analytics, you have to sort of ride the wave a little bit. And I mean that it's not always going to be correct. And very often you hear the wisdom of the old baseball opinions that th those of us that have spent a lot of time in the game have heard from experienced baseball people be woven back in to what your analytics group is discovering with their with their latest findings. But once that happens, you're able to operate with a lot more precision because these tools are um, very objective once you have them in place. So um, I think, you know, Sig Dell, our assistant GM who runs our analytics department, and I and a lot of the people that I work with here have a ton of experience uh, dating back to the St. Louis Cardinals in the middle part of the 2000s, um, trying to balance subjective baseball observations and evaluations with what we're getting from our objective streams, which are always changing depending on the technology that's available um, and trying to find the, the sort of correct balance to put those into place. It's not easy. Um, you know, we, we get it wrong a lot, uh, but, um, you know, we kind of stick with our, our process. And over time, uh, we hope for 
more good results than bad. Yeah, it's definitely forever changing, but you've been on top of it. You're doing a great job with it. I want to ask you the last thing. Trade deadline, as we approach here, and the Orioles are sitting in first place. I remember last year you traded your closer, and everybody's like, what are you doing? You know, so now, and it seemed to work out for you, what are you looking at as we head to trade deadline to keep yourselves where you're at and head on into the postseason? Um, it's always a, a, a challenging time of year, but um, I think, you know, from my point of view, it is our last opportunity to uh, pull in uh, major talent to this team. Um, and so whether that comes in the form of upgrades or depth, you know, we're going to be tempted to look at it because it's it's really hard to bring in new players after the trade deadline. So uh, we're taking it very seriously. We're looking at it. Um, you know, I think when we started the season, we were in the mindset of, um, you know, kind of increasing our odds to make the playoffs with how tough our division is. But now, you know, we're sitting in first place as I speak and we're deeper into the season. And I think increasingly, um, you know, we're getting more of a mindset of how do we increase our odds of a playoff run. So, you know, we're not there yet. We got to get in first and foremost, but uh, this young team is showing us so much that, uh, you know, I, we're, we're starting to, um, you know, hope that we can put together a team that can, can make a deep run. And we're going to be looking for opportunities at the trade deadline to further that goal. So it's great for baseball when the Orioles are playing as well as they are, man. 61 and 38 sitting on top of the East. Really impressive stuff, Mike. Uh, thank you for the time. Good luck on trade deadline and the rest of the season, okay? Thanks so much, Harold. Got you, buddy. Appreciate it.